For me, it's got to be authenticity. Um, you know, everything can be very formulaic, um, but it's really, really a special when you see something that you've never seen before, simply because people took the time and effort. Uh, when you're talking about things that have been cookie cutter, it's like easy, you know what I mean? But when someone has really put their heart and soul into it, you almost get a voice. And when I say authenticity, you can hear the writer, you can hear the creator making it. And I'm with them. You know, I remember when Boots Riley did Sorry to Bother You. And they came to me with this script, and I was like, this man put his heart, his soul into this movie. I said, I have to be a part of it. No matter what, I actually would pay to be a part of a movie like that. You know what I mean? Um, whereas other things you just see and you're like, oh man, they're just coming up, it's, form it's a formula. They're just trying to figure it out. And, I mean, they're just trying to, you know, just put it out. There's no love, you know what I mean? So that's the thing that really makes a difference for me. I do. I mean, when you look at everything, everywhere, all at once, movies like that, uh, there's just so many. And also, you know, just another thing, you're talking about it's a day of reality TV, too. So we get a lot of story, and we demand more. And another thing, too, that's changed the game is the 10-episode series. Uh, you know, things that you could do in a movie, you can't, you can do more in a series. You can almost concentrate, you know, the shows like Secession and these kind of things, where you can really get in depth. I was actually sad to hear that they, this fourth season is gonna be the last for Secession. You know, that's one of my favorite shows. But it's because I've got to know all the stories of all the characters. And we need more. We, we, we'll never get tired of a great story. No, exactly. And, and something that I find fascinating about you as well is, I'm sure your calendar is pretty crazy. Uh, um, but you're an artist as well. You've yes. got some actual you know, drawings and paintings. Um, is that kind of, I guess, your creative outlet? When things are getting crazy and the lights, camera, action, is it nice to just sit down and kind of do that? Is that your creative freedom? L listen, I will get into a sketch and it'll be 8 p.m. and then uh, when I'm done, it'll be 6 a.m. in the morning. And I love that spirit. I love just being lost in art. Um, there's something really satisfying about the creative energy. And what's really wild is that it's really not, it's not treated uh, as special anymore. I mean, I think in schools, they've taken art out of schools, they've taken music out of schools, math and science. Oh no, it's crazy. Math and science gets all the props, but what are you gonna do without music and art? And I mean, fine arts and sculpting and sketching and instruments. And it, I think it's a lost thing where people will see it as a, like a hobby, but for me, it's never been a hobby. It's my lifeblood. It's the thing that makes me tick. And so I can't do without it and I love the, the, you know, the people who are here right now, they, they are those kind of people. Well, it depends on the movies that are out that year. People are interested and excited about the movies. That's number one. And number two is the host. If the host is, uh, is, is spontaneous and can, can make it feel like a party and can tread the line between making fun of people and not uh, insulting people, then uh, it's a good time. And uh, there are so many award shows now, you know, that, that it's hard for them to, like, to step up because uh, there's so much competition. This year will all be, be all about recovering from last year. <laughs> Were you watching that just like, I should have been there, I had so many jokes. It was so weird because I thought, this is a bit. And then I realized that there was no end. So it wasn't a bit, it was real. And then it got, that was kind of scary that, that he would, Will, who is normally such a you know, mild-mannered guy, would lose it like that. But he's obviously, he's done his mea culpa and things are proceeding apace. Uh, 
initially I couldn't imagine anybody would do that. And then I waited for the payoff, for, for what the joke is. You wanted the punchline. Yeah. yeah, and I kept saying, this is actually real. There is no payoff. And Chris was up there thinking, how do I get out of this? What do I do? He's so classy, you know. He just, he just went ahead and did what he did, and then he didn't ask them to pull him out of the, you know, to pull Will out of the show. He's a very classy guy.